Hi and welcome to this training course on aerospace standardization. This video will introduce you to the basis of technical standardization for the aerospace sector. So let's start by having a look at the main documents driving the evolution of standardization in the aerospace sector in Luxembourg. First, we have this 2020-2030 Luxembourg standardization strategy where aerospace is identified as one of the three key strategic sectors for economic development, along with construction and ICT. Following this, the 2021-2025 policy on aerospace technical standardization was developed and three main goals were outlined. Promoting aerospace technical standardization to the market, reinforcing the valorization and the involvement regarding aerospace technical standardization, and supporting and strengthening education about standardization and the related research activities. In this frame, you have the aerospace standards analysis from which most of the information within this video is originated. This standards analysis lays within the aerospace policies frame and is the first step towards its development. So as you can see, it was published on July 12, 2021 and is only focusing on the space sector, excluding aeronautics applications, since there is currently a strong national involvement to further develop the space economy, and this document is supporting this dynamic. The primary goals of this standards analysis are following those of the associated policy. So this is the structure of the document. After the introduction, we continue with a general overview of the space sector with a focus on the European and national levels. Then, the first section outlines the fundamentals of technical standardization, and after these two chapters providing background information, we address the opportunities in technical standardization for companies doing business in the space sector in Luxembourg. And finally, the last chapter before the conclusion is the core of the document, since it gathers all the international and European standardization committees that are directly related to space applications and that may be of interest for the national market. So before diving into the topic of standardization, let's just quickly review the general context of the space sector and let's start with its definition first. In short, the OECD defines it as the economic sector providing goods and services related to space. And for NASA, it is the full range of activities and the use of resources that create and provide value and benefits to human beings in the course of exploring, understanding and utilizing space. This shows that we cannot deny the economic component of the space sector as it is often defined according to this economic value. Then, the Luxembourg Space Agency offers a categorization of the activities of the space sector splitting it into three segments, space, ground, and service. But we'll see an example about that later. So now, regarding the general overview, all of this is detailed in the aerospace standards analysis, so we'll just go through it quickly. If we don't consider uh, fireworks from which solid propellant originates, um, everything really starts in World War II, where the first rocket engines, vehicles, similar to the ones we use today, start appearing. And then during the Cold War, spaceways uh, pretty much brought us to where we are today with the first artificial satellites. The current trend is uh, more on the new space and this privatization of the space sector, which opens up new opportunities. Most of the revenue originates from the sectors of telecommunications, earth observation and satellite navigation, even though these um, other sectors are rising. So it is important to point out that space is not only limited to commercial applications, since uh, science and exploration play a big role in the space sector. Some of the areas that received a lot of attention right now are the following. Space debris, since very few actions have been taken in this field so far and it is especially relevant in the LEO orbit 
with the increasing number of small satellites from constellations. Space tourism, as private companies benefit from the new space environment and start to offer spaceflight services to private customers. Small satellites launch services, as more and more CubeSats, NanoSats and so on are produced and dedicated launch services started to develop. ICT, since this sector and the space sector are closely related in their development for many services, such as IoT or cloud services. And space resources, especially in Luxembourg, where the legal framework keeps evolving to facilitate business activities related to space resources usage, for instance, for space exploration and inhabitation. Now let's move on to the European and national context. In the EU, the European Commission is responsible for the space policy and for the European funding programs. The European Space Agency, which is an intergovernmental organization, is obviously a major player in the space sector in Europe. At a national level, we can identify these milestones regarding the evolution of the space sector. It starts with the creation of SES in 1985, the Société Européenne des Satellites, which is today an international leader in the telecommunications industry. Luxembourg then became a member of ESA in 2005 with a space program focused on economic development. The SpaceResources.lu initiative, launched in 2016, then offered a legal framework for private operators for the exploitation of space resources. Luxembourg then became the second country in the world after the US to offer a dedicated legal framework on space resources. In 2018, the Luxembourg Space Agency was created and took over this initiative. Since then, there has been other evolutions such as the law of December 15, 2020, the registration convention or the current space policy. Part of the space resources initiative is also the creation of ESRIC, the European Space Resources Innovation Center in Luxembourg in late 2020. With the support of ESA and the LSA, one of its initial focus will be extracting oxygen from lunar regolith. So overall, the space sector in Luxembourg is thriving and the contribution of the space sector to the nation's GDP is amongst the highest in Europe. Now, this is the example I mentioned before combining the categorization of the LSA with the upstream and downstream segments. So the space sector is often divided between the upstream and downstream activities. The upstream sector encompasses everything from design and manufacturing of space components to the launch and operation of the associated systems and products. The downstream sector utilizes all the information received back down for practical applications such as GNSS or Earth observation, and this through daily operations of space infrastructure. In this image, you can see this division combined with one from the LSA, including some examples. I'll let you pause the video if you want to go through them all. One important thing to point out though is the fact that even if downstream activities account for most of the revenue generated, they also have received the least attention regarding standards development. So now, if we consider technical standardization applied to the space sector, we could represent it like this. A strong support that over time provides many advantages and continuous improvements on the outcomes of the space sector. Some of the main direct benefits are the following. Facilitate international cooperation, such as for the ISS, for example, where many countries cooperate on this uh, big and demanding project. Facilitate interface of systems, which is um, also related to the first point. Interoperability, notably with other sectors, such as ICT, um, like we discussed before, for instance, with IoT or cloud services reduce technical barriers between stakeholders, and mitigate liability as applying recognized standards 
helps justify choices in the event of a legal action. The Aerospace Standards Analysis holds a dedicated section to present you with the technical committees that are most likely to be an interest for you if you're doing business in the space sector in Luxembourg. This section is called the Standards Watch. Here in light blue, you can see the five categories uh, in which committees are split. So you have those solely dedicated to the space sector with a wide range of applications. And then we have telecommunications, earth observation, technical areas, and systems engineering, quality, safety, and management processes. If you are also working with ICT applications, um, you should know that there is a dedicated Smart IQ ICT Standards Watch analysis, which holds similar information, but for the ICT sector. So we're now about to take a deeper look at the um, four uh, technical committees that are listed under the first section, since they are the ones that are the most relevant for space applications. So this is what the Standards Watch section looks like. Uh, it gathers all the committees in tables like this one. You will find some background information and more importantly, the scope and the structure of the committee. So here we are looking at uh, Sense and Lake JDC5, which is a joint technical committee between the two organizations on the topic space. So it's uh, very general, but this committee is really the center of European space standardization. You can see here the various uh, working groups, which are not definitive since new ones can be created if there's a new need rising as well as others can be discarded. In the comments section, you will see examples of uh, the technical topics that are addressed. And one important aspect of this committee is that it can process ECSS standards to publish them as European norms. So ECSS is the European Corporation for Space Standardization and their standards are widely used, notably in ESA programs uh, where ESA acts as the ECSS central secretariat. So now this committee is from Etsy and it is dedicated to satellite telecommunications, namely earth stations and systems. This committee, as well as Sensen and like JDC5, was created following a mandate from the European Commission, mandate AIM 496. So this committee holds the same kind of information. Um, and once again, in the comments, you can find the various technical topics that are addressed, which are available for uh, various frequency bands. So now this committee and the next one are both uh, committees from ISO, from the technical committee TC20, aircraft and space vehicles. This one is dealing with space data and information transfer systems. So just like for the Sense and Elec, JDC5 and ECSS standards, this committee can process standards from the Conservative Committee for Space Data Systems, CCSDS, and it can process these standards to publish them as ISO standards within this committee. The CCSDS is an initiative from the major space agencies of the world to provide a multinational forum for discussion of common problems in the development and operation of data systems for the space sector. And this is the, the fourth committee that has been um, identified as most relevant for the space sector in Luxembourg, um, which is the space systems and operations. Again, you find the same kind of information. One interesting point is the working group on orbital debris. Um, this shows how standardization is really following the current trends of the market by addressing the new thriving business segments, such as uh, space debris. So that was only a few examples of the comedies you can find in our standards analysis for the aerospace sector. So 
don't hesitate to use the link in the description to download this document and you will be able to find out uh, more details about what we talked about today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or uh, Ilnas using the contact information provided here. Thank you for your attention.